himself with us. Psalm 57. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Psalm 57. With the Most High's permission. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusted in thee. Yea. In the shadows of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry to God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. Say lie. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions. And I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me, into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Say lie. My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory. Awake, soldering in heart. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O oh Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is greater to the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Selah. Yeah, let me see this. <laughs> Bro. Uh, I just, I just <laughs> right, uh, anybody else got anything on their mind before we get going? Go ahead, Jay, bro. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, yeah. uh, yeah. is a lifestyle. It's not just a city. It's 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 a city. Well, he yeah. said it's read that in the book. He said it's read that right. in the book. Right. What book will you read? It wasn't Bible. But the glory of 1 Thessalonians 5.21. You know, um, uh, that's, that's totally opposite. You know, first thing I always get you out to ask him where you read it at because before we get into conversation, let me, let me go and take you to uh, Proverbs 26, 4 and 5. First, we'll go there to get some understanding. And then uh, we'll, we'll get, because there's certain things here, it's going to sound like it's saying the same thing, but it ain't. It's how you have to deal with certain topics so you don't get caught up in just talking and drama, you know. Everything we talk about, when the most high stuff we talk about is words. It can't be idle words about the script. It can never be idle words the way you just sit and, and, you know, you, you take it from face value or you look at it like it's vain. You know, you don't ever want to do that like the word is working. So there are certain things on how you deal with people that may say something way out the blue and you be like, that was crazy. But here's this Proverbs chapter 26, 1 through, uh, 1 through 6. And we'll get a little understanding concerning how to answer certain people. There's certain ways you have to answer things and when they sound crazy like that because that will create. Now there is a lifestyle of fornication. Don't get me wrong. That that it is a lifestyle, but it's seen. You know, lifestyle. right. It just it's, got busted it's, last week. It's practiced every day. And, and when we look at fornication, we look it up in the dictionary. Fornication In other words, we call it F-U-C-K, and it's always capital letters. For unlawful, formal knowledge. 
That's what this word means. And what happened was this word, when they used to uh, arrest prostitutes back in the day, in the early 1900s, they didn't know what to charge them with. You know, so they used to charge them with for unlawful carnal knowledge. And knowledge meaning to bring into the knowing, or if you look it up, sexual intercourse. Adam knew Eve, you know. Jacob knew his wife, and she conceived. So we know what it is, but it's on a corner level. And when it's on a corner level, it has nothing in it that's prepared for what marriage is designed and for. Righteousness. For righteousness, you know. Procreate children. Leave your father and your mother and get what you want. And it's all... That's what Hebrews uh, uh, is 12 come in and what is it, Ben, not be 5, 13, 4, or 12, 4, Hebrews. Well, what it says, right. there's nothing undefiled with that. So with this, though, you're going to get defiled. Because it is what it is. Everything goes with it. It don't matter what it is, how you do it, what goes on. Now, fornication is falling off of the Now, everything falls yeah. under fornication. You got bestiality. Bestiality. You got uh, homosexual, incest, adultery. All of that falls under fornication. So you may see, like the Most High said in Matthew 25, uh, you cannot uh, divorce yourself from anything or any woman or any doctrine. Well, the doctrine of Christ save it from your wife's sake is fornication. Now, how can two married people commit fornication? You know, it would be adultery on, on, on the part of the other, however it would be, but it's telling you that it's spiritual first. If you marry and she decides, shit, I think I want to worship our law. Or he decides, I don't want to deal with the, with the God of the Bible anymore. I want to chase Buddha. You can separate yourself from that at that point. Because of like spiritual fornication. That's spiritual fornication, absolutely. And then the other one is an illegal sex act against your man. Right. Go ahead, read that one. Both definitions. Definition one. Voluntary voluntary sexual intercourse between two unmarried persons or two persons not married to each other. Second definition, Bible. Idolatry, meaning that's how the most high views it. Absolutely. Idolatry because we, we read it in, in the, in the uh, wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, in the 8th chapter, I believe it is, it, it says that spiritual fornication is the beginning of idolatry. You know, that's right. where it basically started at worshiping anything as God other than Him Himself. You know, you, you make something else your God. And that may be another human being. And you love somebody too much. Because Christ said, if you love your father and your mother more than you love me, your children, you're not worried. I mean, he don't mean like, in a sense, how we look at love. He means love to, to the most high and hate are two different things. Love is keeping the law and hate means to love less with the most high. You know, he never hated Esau like that because he tells us, don't abhor your brother and eat him like he's your brother. So he ain't going to say he hate them like that and then tell us we got to love them like that. Now, it, it's not making sense, you know, but he's saying he loved Esau less than he loved Jacob because he told him. What made Esau feel is he despised his birthright. You know, he just wasn't born to be hated of the Most High. He don't create a people to be devils, so to speak. That's other doctrine that would never been the same way with Cain. Cain, if you do right... You know, you should be accepted. If you don't, and they can be allowed to do. So we have to understand the most high hate ain't our hate. So is that like when people say don't hate the person, hate the sin? Yeah, yeah it, absolutely. It's, it's on that level because what happens is don't love the person any less. Uh, love less what they're doing. You know, especially you got to make sure that you ain't doing it first before you chastise them. So we want to understand that from that perspective that, uh, uh, Love of the Most High, and when he say I hate something, he say I love it less than this because he created everything. You know, he said I hate your evil ways. I hate, but evil is the opposite of good. When we sin, we are evil. Ain't no, ain't no if and but. Now you can go to what's called wickedness. Now that's another level of evil. 
You know, you can just do an evil son, you know. I'm going to break the skin off this car. When you come out, it's going to be a flat. Now, that may be an evil thing to do. Now, wicked is, I'm going to cut this gas line and this brake line. Now, you're moving into wickedness now because when traffic and he's doing 60 and starts stomping on them brake pedals and they're going, now you to move to another level. You know, so there's other levels of things that, like, uh, lust moves to lasciviousness. That's what that's all you think about. It's pelvis class in my style. That's your stuff. That, that's, you that's, think of that. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> You want to get a wisdom of Solomon Yes, this is right where the verse was there. Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 14, verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. The devising of idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication. So anytime you decide, I'm going to make God. If you remember the movie Cast Away with uh, Tom Hanks, uh, he made that was a guy right. that become a guy. Right. He almost risked his life for that yeah. swimming out there for a volleyball, yeah. and he called him Will Wilson yeah. because it was a Wilson ball. But I mean, he's crying for this ball, talking to it like it's a human being. Wilson ain't answering back. Wilson can't breathe. Wilson can't eat. He can't save himself. <laughs> can't couldn't save himself. So why he worshiping? So y'all, we have to be clear. On oh, understanding, but let's get back to this proverb chapter 26, 4, 5. When we hear crazy things, y'all, we got to just, you got, it's how you got to answer something crazy. And you got to say it to them so that they don't repeat this to nobody else or they think, you know, the discussion we have, when the Bible comes up, you have to give out the Father's business. This ain't no personal thing. It ain't no, we'll talk about it like this. It's personal with your relationship with Christ. But when it comes down to the Father vision, we have to be on point. We have to be ready to give every man an answer. And you have to be about his business because you have to gain. So we have to always look at gain. Let's look at Proverbs 26, 1 through 6. Proverbs 26, verse 1. As snow in summer, and as rain in harvest. So honor is not seemly for a fool. See, and it's saying like snow and sun. Come on, when are you going to get that? <laughs> um, what's the chances of that? And rain is hard this time. Harvest time is time to gather. So rain will be a terrible time for you to be trying to gather your crop. And it's pouring down. He says, so, uh, so honor is not seemly for a fool. So, you know, based on this, to give a fool honor, you, you're looking at this situation like this. Like we look out there now and it's just snow. You know, you're like, wait a minute, something ain't right with this. It's right. You know. So it's trying to give a fool honor. You got, right, right, I heard it. I heard what you said. That was the bomb. No, that wasn't. That was foolish. <laughs> that talk is destructive. You know, it ain't have no merit to it. It has, it's like evolution. It's like evolution to believe everything came from some big bang. That's foolish talk. There's no need to be even quoting Darwin for no reason. And the main reason being is we came from a half monkey or a half fish. You find a tadpole in transition, turning into a frog. You find everything else in transition, but yet, all of these years, all throughout archaeology, they have never found a man within transition and died off halfway, half monkey, half man, or half man, half fish in, in its uh, evolution status. Uh, we just hit on a little bit. Uh, Bro just asked a question about uh, he asked about fornication. Well, he asked a little bit on, on the guy asked about fornication. We're talking about foolish talk. You know, you can't entertain that because there can be no idle words coming out of your mouth. And he said uh, his friend told him that fornication uh, is a lifestyle. And so, and I'm like, yeah, you all right? It, it is a lifestyle.